Hey everyone, it's Pat and Allie from Seattle Coffee Gear. We're here today with another one of our Roast of the Month tasting videos. Um, this month we have Bluebeard's Finca El Cedro. Uh, I, have a, I have a bag here also. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a, this is a wash process Colombian from Bluebeard. Um, and uh, it's got a bit of a lighter profile. It's, it's sort of medium light. Um, and it's good in a lot of different ways. So what was your what were your first thoughts on this one? I was like really surprised when I ground it because you know, the notes say like raspberry, brown sugar, and ap apricot. And then mm -hmm. the last note is spice. And I usually always think that they put the notes in the order on the bag, like in the way that you would taste them. But that makes sense. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I usually think that, but I don't know if that's always true. The first thing I got, like the like when I was blooming this coffee and when I tasted it is like a huge spice note i think that spice is like right at the forefront yeah i would agree it's definitely um you get it's almost like a um, i don't want to oversell it too much but it has like that mild kind of spiced apple pie sort of like almost baking spice for me um yeah. is what i noticed like sort of a cinnamony but not it's not overstated. It doesn't. It's not. It's not overly sweet. The spice note. No. I think it's mixed with that apricot is really where I'm getting the sort of like baked, baked fruit kind of spices taste. Almost like, almost like maybe like a chocolate covered dried apricot or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. That's some something I would. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's because it's not super chocolatey like what you usually expect. I, I mean, this is changing more and more every year because. There's been more a wider variety of flavors that I've seen out of Colombian coffee in the last couple of years. But I usually talk about being not a huge Colombian coffee fan because I don't the chocolate notes are I find them overwhelming pretty easily. Yeah. But this one is one of those that it doesn't really it's not too rich or too chocolatey at all. Right. Um, and it has much more of that like soft fruit with spices sort of flavor to it, which is cool. It's different. It does. Yeah. How did you brew yours today? So I uh, brew mine as a pour over. I've done it as drip and pour over. I haven't made an espresso with it, but um, I don't know how it would fare as espresso. Um, it seems like more of a brew coffee. Yeah, I think it's probably more of a brew coffee. It probably, I wonder how that spice note would turn out though. I, I don't know, it might be interesting. It'll be fun to try. We should do that. But, um, but it's definitely really good as drip and as pour over. As pour over, one thing that I have noticed about it that's that I always find fun is um, if you play with different bloom times, I've noticed pretty uh, an effect on the flavor. I don't want to oversell it because it's the kind of thing that like unless you drink a lot of coffee, you might not notice it as much. But um, I got definitely more of the kind of apricot. I don't want to say bitter, but um, definitely spicier and a little bit more um, just sort of less sweet, maybe a little more tart uh flavor out of it with a longer bloom time and then with a shorter bloom time i started to get a little more of the raspberry and sugary notes at the front um which is interesting i mean i think that's fun when you can sort of manipulate the flavors of the coffee in the way that you brew it for sure yeah this is my first cup i've brewed of it honestly i just got it in the mail like just pulled it out of my mailbox um but mine my coffee on purpose i tried a one minute bloom just because it was oh, yeah. so fresh and bubbly and i was really pleased with that it's been something i've been trying more lately too just those longer bloom times it's really interesting mm -hmm. and you mentioned getting more of that spiced note too which i found consistent with a longer bloom so yeah. i my longer blooms have been like it's been like 20 seconds versus 35 40 seconds so i haven't gone quite that long of a range oh, um I but uh but but yeah i think that the spice note definitely gets stronger the for the longer you you bloom it um which is really interesting and it's fun uh and it's kind of like you were saying it's it's unique because you don't get a lot of like spice forward flavored coffees like f tasting coffees very often um we don't see very many of them um and this one is a good example of that yeah, especially in this type of body style. Like, it's more of a medium to light body, like we said earlier. And to have a spice note in a coffee like that is really rare. Usually mm -hmm. they're like Sumatra and all that heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. It is. The body on it is very, um, 
uh it's light but it's not like watery or tea like really yeah um it's definitely like a light coffee which is interesting too because it's not a super light roast like i actually was a little surprised the beans are definitely pretty medium um so it's a little bit surprised to see how um how light the body is with the the kind of the the roast level of the beans but i think it works really well for the flavor notes that it that, that it's carrying it's it's you know it's just enough there's just enough sweetness there to kind of pull it over without um getting too like bright or floral for people who aren't as big a fan of that yeah true i like it a lot it's a good one try it out yeah it's kind of a simple like it's it's funny i was like it's complex but simple earlier <laughs> i was smelling it as i was brewing it which is such a i mean it's an oxymoron but um but it definitely is it ha- like all four of those notes that are listed are present it has a sort of berry thing going on it has a bit of sugariness it has the soft fruit it has the spice um so i don't want to say it's simple the flavor profile but it's not um it's not like a kick in the mouth when you take a sip of it. It's it's kind of mild and and really easy to work with from a brewing perspective, yeah. which is really nice, I think. And it's like a really good coffee if you're testing out a, like a new setup, I think, because it it's really easy to work with um, and not too overwhelming. So it's going to be a good coffee for if you just want like something early afternoon that doesn't necessarily need to get you out of bed, but also doesn't need to keep you up all. <laughs> night either that's exactly so. what this is doing for me yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so. yeah so kind of a kind of a simple one but uh, a tasty one from bluebeard um and, and it's kind of a good one too if you're not looking for something wild but a single origin yeah I, I recommend it. yeah it's and it's it's even like i mean a lot of blends you know have that even even the most balanced blends have a little are a little heavier i feel like than yeah. this one um so it's it's really nice if you just want like Something that's just light, not quite like tea, still has coffee notes, um, and uh, but but isn't gonna like overwhelm, like I said. So, totally. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really have any other thoughts on this one. I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to share. Nope. I would love to know what you guys think of these videos, though, and what you'd like to see us do in the future in our roast of the month. If you have any ideas, while. Uh, we're at home some fun ideas that would be cool yeah absolutely and we'll hopefully be back with more videos in this style that aren't just roast the month um and if you have any ideas for things you'd like to hear us talk about there then by all means uh drop drop them below as well thanks so much for (laughs) thanks so much for watching um don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and uh we will see you soon okay bye bye